Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Sky High, a Japanese genre bender from 2002 that was directed by Ryuhei Kitamura. I would classify this as a fantasy, thriller, romance, action flick that takes place in present times. The story follows a young detective played by Tanihara Shozuke, who is on a vengeful search for his fiancé's killer. Blinded by rage and grief, he searches for closure. Meanwhile, his deceased lover, played by Yumiko Shaku, finds herself in limbo at the gate of hatred and is presented with three choices on how to proceed in the afterlife. With 12 days to decide, she follows the now-obsessed detective as well as the serial killer, played by Takao Osawa, who is in fact trying to resurrect a demon through a series of ritualistic murders. So this film was apparently made as a prequel to the television series of the same name, which was in the middle of its run when the theatrical film came out. So pretty interesting release schedule on this one. I have seen the TV show without subtitles. I enjoyed it, but it's kind of difficult to assess without the translations. It was more of like a, a typical J-drama, you know what I mean? Uh, with a pretty interesting premise, right? But in any case, I'm a big fan of this movie despite some of its flaws. Now, if, you're, if you were to really look at this critically, there's some problems here, all right? The acting in Sky High, you know, it's not especially great. I mean, to be honest, it's rather uneven. Uh, Tanihara Shozuke has been in a ton of stuff over the years, uh, some TV work as well. I'm most familiar with him from this movie and the Takashi Miike film, Fudo, The New Generation. Uh, he's a good actor, does a fine job here. And, you know, I would never claim that Yumiko Shaku is an elite actress. I would never say that. But this is probably my favorite performance in her whole career. You know, she's a very likable protagonist. Takao Osawa overacts throughout the entire film. I mean, he chews the scenery every time he shows up. But he's fun to watch as the bad guy. You know, he is. And then we get some supporting roles from A. Sheena of Audition fame as well as a charming performance from Aya Okamoto, who played a side character in Azumi. So, I can't tell you that the acting is great in this movie, but it's, it's entertaining, you know? The other significant criticism relates to the action itself. The movie has sword fights primarily, with a little bit of gunplay mixed in. The action by itself, if you took everything else out of the film and just looked at the action scenes, not that impressive, really. Uh, if you compare this to Kitamura's other films from the early 2000s, especially Versus and Azumi, it's rather weak on the action front compared to those other films. Uh, there's a good amount of fighting, and the choreography is good, but the performances are a bit slow with their striking. Like, the actors, they don't really throw down, you know what I mean? Uh, some people have criticized Aya Ueto's athleticism from Azumi, but Sky High is, is way slower than that. I mean, I think Azumi legitimately had some really good action in it. Whereas this movie, I could see the criticisms. Uh, you know, I can understand them more. There are some good exchanges, though, and even some cool acrobatics at times. But it still feels a little soft, if, uh, if you get my drift. And, I mean, God forbid if you've seen the recent Roroni Kenshin live-action films, because... The action sword fights in those movies completely destroys anything you'll see in this. So do not go in with that expectation, all right? Now, with all of this said, I still love this movie. Why is that? I think primarily it's the story, all right? The story is based on like a set of supernatural rules that they lay out for you. And before making major decisions, the characters need to consider the consequences in the afterlife. Um... And that's the cool part of the movie. Like, you take the act of killing. It's not simply as an act to end someone else's life. In this film, it's portrayed as serving a specific eternal purpose. So, the people who commit murder in the film have a tragic spiritual fate. And a lot of times they understand this fate that's coming for them. And the creative aspect of the film is that their act of killing is a form of self-sacrifice. For the betterment of someone else. And that's how they frame killing in the film. Which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? It's kind of a refreshing, fantastical spin on an old concept. And, you know, 
the villain of the film, he can't kill anybody. All right, there's very specific rules here. The villain can't kill anybody. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how does that make any sense? He's a serial killer, you know? And that's, I'm not going to tell you. you know, you got to watch the film. But it's, that's kind of like the interesting dynamic that kind of develops in the movie. You're like, wow, this is actually kind of deceptively interesting, like uh, how the characters interact with each other and the rules they need to follow, you know, to, to reach their goals. And those supernatural set of rules are what take the film to the next level. You know, I would compare it to something like Death Note, you know what I mean? Whereas Death Note's awesome because of the rule system. Now, the rule system here is not as elaborate or as detailed as Death Note, um, but or even as clever, maybe. But it's kind of, you kind of get that feel where like, okay, if you do this, you're not going to, you're, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? It's that type of thing. And there are a few little unexpected twists that arrive later on. And I think that it still operates mostly within that set of rules they set up. And uh, even the, like, the story elevates the action. Like, I just criticize the action by itself. It's nothing really that great. But the action is fun and even thrilling at times because of the story and the characters behind it, right? And uh, it's just good script writing, I think. There, there are a few contrivances that occur, of course, a few coincidences, perhaps. But given that this has heavy supernatural concepts, a little easier to accept, I think. It's, I think it's just a neat story. And that gives it kind of a unique feel. And the director's another reason why I like the movie so much. Back in the early 2000s, you know, for all you young people who are watching this and you're not familiar with, you know, Japanese cinema from the early 2000s, you know, when, when I was starting to get into it, you know, Kitamura was one of my favorite directors back in the day. I mean, and the reason for that is because he has a very distinct vision in his earlier films. You know, when he was on his game early on, uh, his movies had a very distinctive style to them. You know, the way he moved the camera, he has a very specific flair to it, and it just, it feels like a Kitamura film. You know, and you can't really explain it unless you've seen his movies. Like, uh, in this film, there's a wedding ceremony at the very beginning. It's cl just classic Kitamura. The way he moves the camera throughout the scene, it's just like a cool scene. And even the simpler moments, like a girl who arrives late to work one day, and uh, she doesn't want her boss to catch her walking in the office, so she she's like crawling through the office to get to her desk without her boss seeing. And just the way that film was shot, or that uh, scene was shot, is really kind of like it had a nice humor to it that was really entertaining. It's just that's the way Kitamura was back in the day. It was just kind of visually intoxicating. And I think over the years he's definitely lost that. And I've watched a few of his recent films, and they're just they're just terrible. You know, he does mostly American stuff now, so I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but you know, his older stuff is worth watching. And last but not least, the musical score of this movie is freaking awesome. Like, I've been wanting the soundtrack for this movie for like 20 freaking years, and it just it never shows up anywhere. But, it, you know, the music in the film, I think, is just awesome. It's like a mix of synth stuff and percussion, and it kicks in at some points, and it really, like, elevates the movie, I thought. Really great stuff. So I obviously recommend Sky High, but I think you need to go in with, like, modest expectations. I think it's an interesting genre bender, surprising amount of heart to it as well. You know, for a serial killer movie, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot lighter than a typical serial killer movie, I'll say that much. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those films that I just really like, you know, and I'm sure I enjoy this more than most people do. So just understand that before going in. And don't expect Roroni Kenshin level action, please. Uh, it's easiest to find on DVD still. I do have the, do the two disc DVD set, and I always watch the extended cut of the two, which is like over two hours long, but it's, it's the best cut of the film, I think. Uh, for some reason, Kitamura's films have gotten the shaft for Blu-ray releases. I mean, we have Versus had some tricked out releases, which I'm thankful for, but outside of Versus, I mean, has any of his other stuff gotten like a tricked out release? I need releases for Azumi and this movie, really bad you know i need blu-rays for these and uh they're kind of i don't think we have any in the united states but you know check this one out let me know what you think and uh i think it's a neat little film as always i'll see you next time